Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and I thought since there's been a lot of talk around the SO4050 Votors, I thought I'd give them a spin, or at least the Votor 2B, the first one which doesn't have any armament. Now both of these at the moment in game are sat at BR 8.0 and they are both going up to 9.0 in one of the patches which is coming in the future, probably coming very soon. And a lot of people have talked about them, and the issues that they bring to the game, and I thought, well, why not try it for myself? So this video is much more of a, I've played uh, three games in this thing, giving initial thoughts, you know, pretty much a stock review, if you want to see it like that. Uh, if you are really interested in jets, I would say there are many other YouTubers out there who are much more experienced in jets, and also are... You know, they, they create a lot more jet content, so if you're here just for that, then I would say, you know, go and watch them. But if you're here just to hear some initial thoughts on a stock Votor 2B, then, well, you can watch this instead. So, the first thing to notice when you're in a match is the fact that it takes you around about two minutes to get to a target. That means that, overall, it takes you about four minutes to get back to your airfield. Now, since the Votor 2B has a bomber spawn, there is no way that any plane can actually catch you before you get back to your airfield, um, because you can easily go over a thousand kilometers an hour straight after bombing a point, just basically turning around and diving down. There have been a few issues who have run into uh, a few people who, in my matches, have run into uh, wing overload, but me personally. I haven't uh, run into that. The major issue that I find with this thing, or the most frustrating thing uh, when flying it, is the fact that it has the bombs on the wings. So it has uh, stock four bombs on the wings, uh, four uh, 250s, and then it has six on its internal bomb bay door. Because this machine is so fast, it's impossible to get those bombs off and then all the bombs off in the bomb bay in one pass. This means you either have to go for one base and then uh, switch to another one, or you have to turn around and hit, uh, you know, uh, the same base twice, but you have to do two runs in it, meaning that you are giving yourself more time to be shot at and get after by everything else. So, that is definitely an issue that um, I've run into, a weakness of it, we'll say, but maybe that's dealt with with some of the larger bomb loads. But overall, as a stock uh, version of a plane, I find it very hard to believe how this thing shouldn't be 8. Uh, 9.0. Sorry, When I was playing, I never felt in any danger on my first run going after bases. Now, this could be because the map sizes that I was playing on were way too small for a machine like this and favoured much more uh, turn fighters and stuff like that when it came to jets, uh, such as Normandy, such as Advance of the Rhine, basically the new maps. Maybe on Spain, the, the enemy team would have a chance of getting up to altitude or getting up to me before I got to the base, but I incredibly, I highly doubt it. Because, not just because this thing has 110% thrust, but also because it can go 1100 kilometers an hour stock. Now, I don't, I can't speak to what it gets with its engine upgrades or its cover upgrades, but what I can speak to is the fact that a stock plane at 8.0 going 1100, even though it has no guns on it, is pretty much impossible to kill. The, the only times where I felt threatened in the Votor 2B was uh, the first time when I was trying to land. My team had got wiped, there was two of us left in our Votor 2Bs, and I got destroyed while trying to land, which was pretty much the way that you had to deal with Canberras back in the day, who were running around, and B-57s uh, which were running around. You had to catch them trying to land. Now, this easily is solved if I just take more fuel. You can take a minimum of eight minutes, I've been taking that, just so I can get to a base, get to the airfield, try and be as efficient as possible in getting as many bombs off. 
The second time I was threatened was after I had already got my bombs off, I had landed, I'd taken off, and once again my team was wiped. So it was pretty much uh, the Canada Sabres, MiG-15 bases, and they were just trying to rail me. What I found kind of interesting though is it took them quite a long time to actually kill me. Um, they hit engines, they hit wings, they hit fuselage, but it seemed like they had to pump a bunch of rounds into me uh, before I died. Now this obviously is only a one-time thing, so therefore, you know, it may have been a server thing, or it may have just been lucky on my part, but it did seem very, very odd. Another thing to comment on is the fact that this machine goes 1100 kilometers on the deck, remember. So once you take off uh, from the airfield after your second spawn, uh, since you know the first spawn you're going to spawn at bomber altitude, nobody's going to be able to touch you, get back to your airfield in about four minutes, and then take off again. Getting up to speed and the first like zero to 500 is a bit of an issue, but after that this thing just takes off. And getting to a thousand is very easy to do. What I've also found is around 900 to 1100 kilometers an hour, this uh, machine turns like a brick. And that has its advantages and its disadvantages. So because it has such a wide turning circle, this means that it doesn't lose hardly any speed while turning and can be negated by the fact that you can just dip down a little bit and you will gain that speed back. So in that sense, if you want to not lose speed and turn, then this is perfect. In another sense, you can't turn sharply at all, but also another benefit is that I have never run into overload issues in this aircraft because of its turn being so slow. And it's not as if my crews are great uh, right now, my French. Right now I have 2.5 G tolerance on the crew that I was using. But doing these high banking turns meant that the enemies could not catch me, and also I was able to turn without running into uh, issues of losing control or anything like that. And that was kind of nice, uh, to be honest, making it very friendly to a beginner who wants to play some jets, or at least wants to play some jet bombers. Another nice thing I realized is when you drop your bombs, um, they have a really nice trajectory to them. I don't know how to describe this, but there's something really nice about your bombs not going at like a 90 degree or an 80 degree angle, but going at like a 45 or 50 and kind of swooping in and hitting a target on the way instead of like uh, just straight down. It's, it's a nice feeling to have and that is really replicated uh, with this machine. Because it doesn't have any armament, uh, you're pretty much useless when it comes to air combat, but because nothing can catch you, and nothing will ever be able to kill you unless you are landing, or your team has already been wiped, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the fact that this is an 1100 km an hour machine at 8.0, which can get matched up at 7 point, uh, against 7.0s, and they literally can't do anything against it. The only time you can catch it is if it's trying to land, and then at that point you've got to deal with the AA, meaning that, you know, you're probably gonna die anyway to the AA, training one for one with a machine that doesn't have any guns on it. So yes, it does have its issues. I really don't like how its bombs are situated on the wings. It would be nice if I could open the bomb bay before uh, I drop all of the external bombs. Yes, it doesn't have any <clears throat> it doesn't have any guns, so you can't, you know, fight in an aggressive way. But you can't die. It is very hard to die in this aircraft before you actually get your mission done. Basically what you need is some pilot to be able to climb to four thousand meters in about two minutes. Actually no, it's not even two minutes, it's about one and a half because of the trajectory of your bombs from the uh, target. So Maybe if you're in like an ME-163 and you are cheating by doubling the thrust of the machine, maybe then the Votor-2B can be killed. But right now, it's pretty hard to kill the damn thing. Uh, the only ways are ways which you have to put yourself in danger or your team has already wiped. And because of the scenarios on these new maps, where a lot of them finish kind of quickly, Normandy is pretty much designed to end in 10 minutes, if you have like two or three Votors and they hit the bases, that gives your team a massive advantage and then the Votors can just run away. 
and you can't catch them, and you will lose the match, because you'll lose the match by tickets instead of all of your machines dying. This is pretty much the same issue when the Canberra and the B-57s came out that we had, because they would get into high-tier propeller matches and do exactly the same thing. Hit a base, maybe hit two bases, and then just run away. And nothing could catch them. It's also the same issue that uh, machines like the Vulcan have if they were ever added to the game. But Chicken Bites did a really good video on this, talking about the Vulcan, and how if you actually put it into the game at this current state, there would be literally nothing that could kill it. Well, here we have a mini variant of what the Vulcan would be like, the Votor 2B. And if it does stay at 8.0, which it looks like it's not going to, then it will never be killed. And now at 9.0, it will still get its bomb load off, it will still be able to get back to its airfield, but maybe after it takes off, you can actually catch it. So, at the end of the day, you can always get your mission done in the Votor 2B. There is never any issues you're going to have against other aircraft which are going to come after you. And just overall, it's it's a very weird topic to talk about when you talk about unarmed aircraft or talk about uh, machines which have a massive advantage in speed but don't really have anything else. Because you get into some weird territory where it's like, well, overall it can't influence this part of the battle, so you've got to make it be able to influence this other part very, very highly. And that's pretty much what the Votor 2B does. It influences it in the way that if you have three of them and they're not brain dead, they can win you a match because the enemy team doesn't have any bombers. But if, uh, because that is the case, you are three fighters down, so you're going to lose that fighter battle every time. So therefore, how does that balance out? How does it work? And is it right for these aircraft to be in the game? I think so. Um, maybe not the Votor 2B, but I think there are definitely shouts for the Canberra because it can actually get caught at its BR. The Votor 2B can't, which is why it's going up to 9.0, and then once it's spaded, the only thing that will be able to catch it is a Hunter. And guess what? They're just going to have horrible turning battles uh, where they're both turning, you know, a thousand kilometers an hour and higher, and it's going to be incredibly boring to play, because the Hunter doesn't handle well at that speed, and the Votors don't either. My god, it's... it's gonna be awful. Now, add on to this, 30mm cannons, and I know a lot of people are saying, yes, these things handle awful. Yes, they do, but they can't be damn caught if you go in a straight line. Like, I understand, they are awful in the fighting role which the game in general is uh, focused around. The PvP aspects, the fighter versus fighter. But what the Votor gives you is another way of, of fighting this battle, and it is a way which is incredibly boring and an incredibly unfun way, which is hitting bases and just running the whole damn time. And at lower tiers, it's okay, because the bombers can actually fight. And there is a nice element where it's bombers versus fighters, or bombers versus attackers. And there's this nice, like, um, you know, uh, which side can win? Can you take out the bombers before they get to their bases? Can you kill the bombers before they get to uh, their targets? Or are the bombers going to be able to get there? Will they give your team a slight advantage and all of this stuff? The Votor cannot be killed before it gets to its objective, meaning that that is straight out of the window which is probably the biggest issue with it. But overall, uh, I agree with the fact that it's going up to 9.0. I'm going to keep playing it for now, just to spade it out and see uh, how good it is. But at stock level, I don't have one modification yet. It's already way too fast for anything that it can fight at 8.0. If it gets up to 9.0, which obviously it's uh, BR's going to be, you still can't catch it on its first bomb run, which is the main issue you're going to uh, want. It's the main thing you want to do with a bomber like a Votor. You want to catch it before it gets to your bases. So either you make the map the maps massive, like you bring back Spain and maybe people can deal with it, or you put this thing at a ridiculously high BR, or you add in really, really fast interceptors, which is something that we may see when rank 6 comes around. But anyway, 
uh, this has been a short look at the Votor 2B. I hope you all have a lovely day, and I'll see you next time.